In this lab, we will be demonstrating homogenization, ion exchange chromatography, as well as ammonium sulfate precipitation. First, you will need to weigh out 25 grams of chicken muscle. Next, you will carefully cut up the material to remove sinew and bits of fat to make sure that your sample is completely muscle tissue. You will cut the sample into small pieces and add it to 37 and a half milliliters of extraction buffer. Notice that you will be required to wear gloves at all times during this lab because the extraction buffer contains hazardous materials which may cause health problems. Also be aware that at all times that you're not actively working with your sample, you must keep it on ice so that the enzyme does not degrade. We'll be using a blender to homogenize the sample. You should run the blender in short pulses to homogenize the sample. In between these pulses, you should carefully remove the blender from the stand and place it on ice so that the sample can cool back down. When you've finished blending your material, the sample should be completely homogenized. You should see no bits or no pieces that are obviously different from anything else. As you can see in this sample, there are still some bits at the bottom. The sample is overall a little bit chunky and needs further homogenization. Also available in this lab is a polytron. This polytron is a laboratory homogenizer that quickly homogenizes a sample completely. But because we only have one, you will be using the blender first and using the polytron only if you need to further homogenize your material. As you can see, the material produced by the polytron is much more homogeneous. We will load the centrifuge tubes by carefully pouring the homogenized mixture into the tubes on ice, making sure that the tubes are pre-chilled before we do this so that we do not lose any activity in our enzyme. Once the tubes have both been poured, we will place them into beakers on a balance in order to ensure that both tubes are balanced. For this, you can use a 1 mil pipette set to 1 mil that will allow you to transfer material between the two tubes to ensure that they are properly balanced. Once you've ensured balance between these tubes, you must be certain that they are placed directly across from each other when in the centrifuge. So keep these two together. After centrifugation, you will be collecting the supernatant from each of the tubes. Make sure that you collect your group's amount from the collected material and take an aliquot of this material. This aliquot will be used for later analysis, so it's important that you keep this on ice as well. Be sure to collect the volume of the supernatant as well. This will be useful in later calculations. Next, you will be adding the supernatant that you've just collected to DEAE matrix that has been provided to you by the TA. You should have 50 mils of DEAE in a dry cake form. To this cake, you will be adding your supernatant and carefully stirring with a glass rod or spatula. You will stir your sample for approximately 5 minutes, making sure that it stays cold the entire time so that your sample does not degrade. Next you will be filtering the DEAE out through a Wattman paper in a Buchner funnel. The importance of this is you will be collecting the supernatant and you do not want the DEAE in the supernatant for the next step. You'll be using a vacuum apparatus controlled by a TA You will be carefully passing your sample through a moistened Wattman filter paper such that the DEAE is removed. Your sample continues on to the bottom of the flask where you can collect it.
you will need to return the DEAE cake back to a TA so that you can remove the bound materials. Be sure to record the volume of the flow through. This will be useful in further calculation. Here we are recording 125 milliliters of sample that have passed through the DEAE. In the next step, we'll use this volume to calculate the amount of ammonium sulfate we will need to weigh out in order to reach 65%. Once we have weighed out the ammonium sulfate, we will carefully add it to our sample with a stir bar on a stir plate in ice. It's important that this sample remains in ice for the duration to avoid any degradation that may occur. You must slowly and carefully add the ammonium sulfate to the sample to avoid disrupting the stir bar underneath. The stir bar must remain in motion so that the sample does not sit too far and develop small concentrated areas of ammonium sulfate within the sample. Once all of the ammonium sulfate has been added and all of the ammonium sulfate has gone into solution, the sample will equilibrate for approximately 15 minutes on ice before proceeding to the next step. This is what your sample should look like after ammonium sulfate precipitation. It is slightly milky and slightly foamy from the motion of the stir bar. The sample will then be centrifuged again. This time the sample is within the pellet and not the supernatant, so it is important to remember that at this stage you will be saving the pellet and discarding the supernatant. The pellet will then be resolubilized in a minimal volume of extraction buffer. Once resolubilized, the sample will then be placed in a dialysis bag and allowed to dialyze overnight in extraction buffer. The sample buffer will be changed at least once during this overnight period so that most of the salt is removed from the sample. This is important because the next step is affinity chromatography and any salt on, on the column during affinity chromatography will cause all sample to go through and not bind.